PCD is a government organization that was founded in 1949 that works with local landowners and public agencies to conserve natural resources. Our programs include urban agriculture, farm planning, water quality, habitat improvement, and environmental education. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about water quality and give you all sorts of great information about rain barrels, but before I get into that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our watersheds in Pierce County. Watersheds have adapted over time to manage the water that flows through them. The Puyallup and Nisqually watershed streams are filled with rainwater during the winter and filled by melting snow from Mount Rainier in the summertime. Alternatively, the KGI and Chambers Clover watershed streams are filled with rainwater during the winter, but groundwater in the summer since they are not connected to a mountain snowpack. Watersheds are important because the natural streams and rivers and stormwater runoff within a watershed ultimately mix together. It is essential to consider these downstream impacts when developing urban spaces and implementing water quality best management practices. In other words, we all live downstream, and just as we hope people upstream are keeping their water clean, we want to consider our impacts on watershed health for ourselves and those that live downstream from us. Rainwater harvesting with rain barrels gives us a chance to collect rainwater when it is falling that would otherwise turn into stormwater and slowly release this water into our landscaping when soils are not saturated and can soak up more water, therefore not sending it downstream. Plus, there are plenty of ways we can use the water as homeowners around our home or as gardeners in our gardens. One thing that is really important to know about rain barrels is that they are one form of low impact development. Now, I want you all to take a step back for a moment and think about watersheds and the functionality that they provide to water quality. Before modern development, we had a natural ecological community that included diverse plants and structures. Thinking about the layers of a forest, we have our upper canopy, which is the point at which rain first hits, then we have our midstory, and the rain makes its way down to our low shrubs, ground covers, and forest soils. Acting like a complex sponge, these layers soaked up the precipitation and cleaned it too. Before development, surface runoff was less than 1%. After development, it has climbed all the way up to 70%. So it's become rather apparent that we have lost our green space over time, and now we need to do something about it. Long ago, as we began to develop the area, a major consideration was what to do with all of this rain. We get 40 inches of it a year in western Washington. At that time, the main goal was to move all of this water from our living spaces and put it in a centralized system. So think storm drains. This is considered traditional development and creates a large amount of storm water that doesn't get clean before reaching any major bodies of water. So therein lies the problem. Next, I want to talk about rainwater versus stormwater runoff. Stormwater runoff is water that originates as rain or snow. Because of traditional development, a high quantity of the water flows across the land instead of seeping into the ground. As this water comes into contact with paved surfaces like parking lots, streets, and building rooftops, it comes into contact with pollutants that can really impact water quality. Fortunately, organizations like the Washington State Department of Ecology are now responsible for regulating stormwater runoff and having clean water standards to meet. What we now promote is low impact development. Low impact development refers to systems and practices that use or mimic natural processes that result in the infiltration, evapotranspiration, or use of stormwater in order to protect water quality and associated aquatic habitat. As rainwater becomes stormwater, it comes in contact with multiple pollution sources or non-point source pollution, which can add up to a huge impact on water quality. So what can we as homeowners do? Luckily, we can do low impact development too. We love low impact development because it mimics nature's designs and incorporates these models into our built society. A large scale example could be something as large as a city or small scale could mean something on your own property. Rain barrels are just one tool of low impact development. Other examples include land conservation, grain roofs, urban tree canopy, permeable pavement, cisterns, and even rain gardens. And lucky for you, PCD has their very own rain garden program in which we can help assist you, the homeowner, in designing a rain garden to soak up roof water on your own property. 
Be sure to visit our website to find more about this amazing opportunity. PCD has other low-impact development programs that include DPAVE, which is the removal of concrete and asphalt to add back in green space. There is also our urban tree sale program, which targets areas with high development to help build up a healthy green tree canopy. Okay, enough about our other low-impact development programs. Since I know you're all here to learn about rain barrels, let's get to it. Next, you'll hear from some of my colleagues who have rain barrels of their own, and they'll explain why they chose rain barrels and their unique ways of using them. Hi, my name's Renee from the Pierce Conservation District, and this is just one of three rain barrels that we have on the farm. And this one we use to water our horses, so the hose goes over to their water truck. I can just turn it on right here whenever they need water. Um, the water is coming off our manure storage structure, so my husband built a little platform between the post and the manure bin to hold up the barrel because you need that elevation to push the water into the trough. The overflow coming through this hose goes into this five gallon bucket, which my dogs drink out of, and then it just runs into the grass where it's infiltrated into the, the clean soil here. And then the third way we use it is our chicken coop right over my shoulder here. So I use it to fill up their water. This is just one of many ways that you can use rainwater catchment systems on your property. Next, if you're like me, you love to garden, but you want to keep it simple. Here's a couple of ways that I like to use my rain barrel to water my front yard. Hi everyone, this is Allie from Pierce Conservation District, the voice behind the video. Um, I'm here today to show you guys my rain barrel and what I use it for. So here's my rain barrel in my front yard. I mainly just use mine to water um, all of my grasses and everything that I've got going on in my front beds right here. Um, and there's a couple different ways that you can go about doing this. Right now I've got a drip um, irrigation hose on there right now and I've just kind of woven it throughout my plants um, and all you do to turn it on is just turn this lever here and the water will come right out and seep through that hose. Um, your other option too is to just take this guy off and you can really just let it go. Um, you can even use it to fill up your watering can and do it that way. I also love to use it for my indoor house plants. They seem to do really, really well with rain barrel water. Um, one more thing I wanna show you guys too, and I'm a little short here, so bear with me. When we unscrew the top right through here, we've got a nice little filter on the top, and as you can see, there's lots of debris in there. So that is what keeps all of that nasty stuff from going into our awesome rainwater. So you really want to make sure to take this guy off if possible. Um, and then you can see it's really simple, it just connects to my downspout right through here. And there you have it. At this point in my workshops, I start to get a lot of questions. And I'll bet one of them that many of you are wondering is, is whether rainwater is legal to harvest. The answer is yes, rainwater is legal to harvest. The Washington State Department of Ecology released an interpretive policy statement in October of 2009 stating that you can in fact harvest rainwater from your roof. Another question that I often get is, how much stormwater really comes off of a roof? One inch of rainfall on a 1,000 square foot roof surface will yield approximately 500 gallons of soft, untreated rainwater. We get 40 inches of rain a year, so that's 20,000 gallons. And what about moss killer on roofs? We recommend that if your roof has been treated for moss prevention that you do not use this water in your edible gardens. You'll also want to consider if your roof receives frequent bird droppings. New research also concludes that the cleanliness of water used to water your edible garden depends greatly on what type of roof material you have. If you'd like to get involved with rain barrels, consider attending a Pierce Conservation District rain barrel workshop. You can find more information about these workshops on our website at piercecd.org on our rain barrel page. Thank you for taking the pre-survey and for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed learning about harvesting rainwater and other ways to manage water on your property.
The next step in this self-guided workshop is to take the post survey. Go back to the Brain Barrel page and take that survey. This is very important to us as the results help us bring this program back to the community each year and even tell us how we can improve it. Lastly, don't forget to purchase your Rain Barrel. Back on the Rain Barrel page, there is an orange button on the top left hand side that says purchase. That will take you to an online store where you will select the date you would like to pick up your Rain Barrel. We have several distribution events where you can get your Rain Barrel from our PCD office in Huallup. And if none of those days or times work, let us know and we can schedule a different time with you. If that applies to you, please select the first Rain Barrel Workshop date. As a reminder, these Rain Barrels will come disassembled. There is a video on the webpage of how to assemble the barrels yourself at home, and we will email you the video after your pickup as well. We do this to keep the Rain Barrel cost low for you, plus it is a fun family activity to do. If you want to learn more about rainwater harvesting in Washington State, check out the Ecology website link. If you have any questions, feel free to call me, Allie, at 253-845-9770, extension 117.